2007, we had a big, big report coming, releasing in Bangkok in May. And they say, really, there's something going on. But what's for us? Some of these things may sound fairly quantitative, but unless you really understand it, there's hardly anything to worry. It's not like having fever for 103 degrees, right? That's immediately you see something to worry. But 35% increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide, okay, fine. That's anyway 0.03% in the atmospheric uh, quantity. So what's the big deal about it? Right. So you really have to know a little bit more. You have to understand the issue more. The 21st century perhaps asked from us to be more aware of what's going on and to have a much more in-depth understanding to really solve some of the issues. That's different from the last century. Because human being has been so creative, so innovative, putting out so many things, that simple knowledge may not be sufficient. We normally say in education, higher education is the basic education, not just education. Of course, not forgetting the values, it's very important. Right? In 0.76 degrees Celsius, then over the next 100 years, this 3 degrees rise. Then you have a 10 centimeter rise in waterfall, water, the sea level. And Professor Mohan Mulasingh, who is one of the vice presidents of the IPCC, has a very interesting way of putting out, we are fighting today maybe over a plot of land. And that plot of land in 30 years may not be there. The Jaffna and the eastern part may really get, will not be there. He has a very strong way of saying this, stating this, uh, just to get the idea of sea level rise. Just plot the one meter contour, the mean sea level in Sri Lanka, and you will identify what we are going to lose if the sea level is going to rise. And that one meter, technically, if you take even three degrees, it, you take one degree rise, there's a conservative estimate. You know, some of these things are based on conservative estimate. So Matra is gone, Jaffna gone, Eastern Price gone, right? We are in the, the highlands, no longer the highlands are highlands. Right? So it, it's interesting thinking and, and I suppose the ability to think, ability to analyze, ability to visualize what can happen, it's a very, very important thing. But not just get, don't get too worried about it. I mean, getting worried will never solve. So again, uh, another small issue like this 0.1 unit decrease in ocean pH, very interesting. What will happen to the shellfish? How will they get their carbon dioxide, the calcium carbonates? What will happen to the equilibrium cycle? If the shellfish are disappearing because the shell is no longer getting formed, you are affecting a kind of like another food chain. And when food chains vanish, you are not, okay. there's a knock-on effect, right? So these things, when you look at some of these, relate equilibria to reality. It's pretty horrifying, right? And on some of the climate change model for Sri Lanka, they come out and say like, look, tea industry is going to be benefited by heavy rainfall. But that model may not have in, uh, included the soil erosion due to high rainfall. So on one point you get extra rain, plant is getting, but from the bottom you are losing soil. And just remember that if you want to get a one centimeter topsoil layer, you're talking about 500 years of activity. Right. Over 500 years, we grow, uh, get this topsoil, maybe one centimeter plus thickness. And if you don't protect it, there's no soil protection, it just gets washed. And remember, in Sri Lanka, the number one pollution problem is the loss in soil productivity because we are losing soil. Right. We have brand number of 103 rivers, all of them are today, because of our activity, carrying soil, the topsoil, the fertile part, to the ocean. And if those atmospheric models do not include the lithospheric aspect or the geospheric, geosphere activity, like the soil, let's say, we get the wrong answer. Because some models say T, T value is going to go up, the paddy and so on is going to go down, right? Because of the salinity intrusion, etc. And on top of that, there may be more mosquitoes, as if we don't have any. Right? So you are going to get more and more in many places and more and more health issues the dengue, the malaria. So even Singapore today is talking about, but the issue is we have to act. I mean, that's what I think Jill said, you have to act. And we have to act in a very sincere, competent manner. And I said, when you say youth yatra, you're talking about leadership, understanding, understanding your own values, right? Respecting each other. We are starved for leadership today. Starved of leadership. We need real leadership. That's very, very important. And it has to come from you. 
because finally the numbers do count. It's not just the numbers in the numbers game, but the numbers in value. If you have a committed group, that can change. Mahatma Gandhi just walked to the sea and collected some salt and perhaps said to the British that mm -hmm. don't tax salt. Right? So it's, it's very interesting. But then he had few people behind. But there's one commitment, but then ability to kind of push the others to follow you. But you have to be committed to the right goals. That's very important. It should never, never be destructive. That's also very, very important. It should be based on values. Right? So that's the message for youth in some way. But we have this global warming. Just to probably get into worry, you to, you to worry about all this. I mean, like we have huge issues. As I said, malaria, dengue, and chicken, dengue may be bad, but chicken gunya can be crippling, right? I mean, we, we went through that cycle. I mean, bones are getting, I mean, my joints are pain. It's all the issues. So the agriculture impact, I don't have my stable diet, or science have to identify more saline-specific varieties. Then the forest impacts, we are already down to 18%, what will happen? And that's the carbon sink. Remember the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize winner received the Peace Prize for planting trees. And she has now led the movement planting 30 million trees. And she is saying that don't talk a lot, go out, dig a hole, plant a tree. That's much more important than talking. Right? Simple things. Just imagine if 19 million people, each one digs a hole and plant a tree. Anyway, water resources impact, we have a severe issue on water. We don't drink today what the doctor prescribes, sick least does, because either it's not safe or either it's expensive. Maybe we have our insurance for the kidney diseases later on. So impacts on coastal areas, as I said, Prabhakaran may be no aware. I mean, he may not be definitely studying the IPCC fourth report, <laughs> right? But Professor Mohan Munasinga says, look, I mean, in a while, that player may not be there. I'm asking Colombo to take action to save Jaffna, not from the somebody, mm -hmm. but from the, the sea tide. And species and natural areas, sometimes we humans are very selfish, we want to survive for us. But the science stays today, within 10 to 15 years, if you act today, that we have some very good, I mean, we can make some progress. But still, it may be too late for the penguins and the polar bears. So it's time for soft toys. Right. So penguins, like the Jurassic Park, we may see the next film on the penguin, penguin on polar caps or something, but no polar caps to be seen. But I want to stress this message. We have, we did not cause it, right? It must be remembered, it must be understood. We didn't set up on, I mean like didn't basically drive this issue. And alone we cannot cure it either. 19 million Sri Lankans in 65,000 square kilometers with a smaller carbon footprint. Is not going to cure it by action. But that doesn't mean to go rampant and to be destructive because I just cannot do it. What the hell, I'll enjoy myself. You know, that's not the answer. But remember, we will suffer from it. So it's a message. We will suffer from it. Whatever is happening, we will suffer from it. It may not be these pictures. But I don't do this. We will really suffer from it. Because these pictures means our inaction in some quarters. But you superimpose climate change issues you are going to be suffering, right? You may not know which drain you will be falling into. So that's the issue, problem, but address the smaller issues as well. It's very important. This is what I say, again, solid waste, it's all over there. But if you take Sweden-like places, you are running trains with biogas, right? But we have the blue mental city doing nothing. So we want the younger generation to look at science and actually be creative with science. It's the same, it's very important. Einstein said, like, look, I came out with the laws to break the, break the atom. But he disliked somebody putting the atom bomb, but he said atoms of peace. So science is value neutral in some sense. It's up to us to make use of it. So climate change is, as some sentence there says, human being has been the architect of his own destruction. But you can be the architect for a greater civilization as well. Right. Make use of the knowledge. So that's very important. Right. Climate change, we must save. And we have the Parakram Bhav philosophy. Or if you take the Harvard Business Review, that's, a, that's like eating Swiss cheese. Right. Bit by bit, piece by piece, tackle the problem. Drop by drop, extract the resource. Don't waste it. Same philosophy. 
when you are looking at the leadership and there's one person who did that, both creativity, innovation and peace is very important. It's the values and science. You must put the two together to drive forward. Right? Sometimes we say we are educated but we are valueless. Sometimes we have values and that's very important. May not be even educated, but I would say the values are more important. But two together in the right direction, you can change the world. But that's what is important. Thank you.